Okay, put it on at a jaunty angle. Oh, it's very small. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry uh, Henry just tweeted me before, and he was meant to be here today, and he had an emergency uh, waistcoat fitting, so he asked me to do it for him. <laughs> Obviously, Henry had a uh, much normal, more normal size head than I do, so I'll just put it on the back like that. See if it works. Yeah, it's good. So thank you, Simon. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this uh, this project. Um, it was one that I that I certainly jumped at um, before I started reading Henry's book. Um, <laughs> which yeah, I'm really sorry. About Simon pa painted expertly as incredibly boring. Um, the the weird thing is his life is. Is, is absolutely fascinating, and I managed to get a copy of um, a biography of him written by um, a Tasmanian author called um, uh, Rod Howard. He wrote a book called um, uh, Forger's Tale, which is completely out of print, but I managed to write to the, to the publishers and get a, get a copy. And it's absolutely fascinating. He's this amazing, uh, like you said, this, this failed businessman who believed himself to have been cursed at birth by a, by a gypsy. <laughs> Um, and that three bad things would happen to him through his life, that when he got to his 40th year, everything would be fine. It didn't turn out fine, as it turned out. He, yeah, so he, forged, he forged some bonds, and that was a big, a big deal at the time in, uh, in the UK, and uh, tried to flee to America, uh, and was, was, he was on the boat uh, when he was caught, and threw himself off the, uh, off the side of the boat, and tried to dash his own head on the side of the boat. He was rescued... He was back in jail and, and shipped out uh, to Australia, and there's, the story just gets weirder from there. So, um, but perhaps this will uh, encourage the publisher to bring the book back into print. If you, if you ever find it or you want to read it, let me know. I've got one copy, um, and I'll pass it around. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, so I'm going to read a excerpt from the book, for which I'm terribly sorry. Um, yeah, I decided to... Ooh, um, I decided to read the section where the, the, the first uh, sight, true, true sighting of Australia, I guess, when uh, Henry's on the on the ship. Um, so I, I must uh, apologise for for Henry's writing style. I'll do my best to make it exciting, but I can't uh, <laughs> I can't promise anything. But just throw something at me if it gets too much for you. Um, someone asked me to read for about seven minutes. So I, I think this is about seven, but if it gets too boring, just <laughs> Knock my hat off or something. Yeah, do, do one of those, yeah. Uh, so, here we go. <clears throat> I don't think it needs too much um, background. He's, he's on the ship. He's, uh, he's just, just sailed into, uh, into Australia. <clears throat> Five and twenty years ago, New South Wales was not what it had since become, an important English colony, but partook more of the nature of a mere penal settlement for the reception of offenders transported from the mother country and was under a form of government precisely in keeping with this character. Still, some of the properties belonging to it and which have subsequently served to exalt it to its present station were known and appreciated, and scarcely was the anchor cast than Quintus availed himself of every opportunity that the intercourse with the shore permitted. I should say Quintus is the, is the main character, is, is Henry. And, and I should also add that the word intercourse is used a lot in this book. He has intercourse with friends, he has intercourse with water, uh, intercourse with the shore here, uh, intercourse with business associates. It's fascinating. Uh, so anyway, uh, so Quintus availed himself of every opportunity that the intercourse with the shore permitted towards acquainting himself with such particulars as he fancied might help to give a direction to his future movements. Again, it's just he got off the boat. Um, seven pages. Um, relying upon his uniform, previous good character, upon his offence having been a solitary blot on his escutcheon, upon the means that were still at his command through friends, upon his experience of both men and manners, and upon his acquirements, which fitted him for a many, which fitted him for many a varied sphere of action. He had all along indulged the notion that banishment from the land of his fathers would, nearly, would be nearly all he would have to endure upon reaching his destination, and his fervid imagination easily enabled him to skip over some, some three or four years of his life, at the end of which he fancied he already saw more ease, happiness and contentment than had long fallen to his lot. <coughs> In proportion, therefore, to these flattering dreams were his chagrin and disappointment when the true nature of the state to which he had fallen became revealed to him by the different persons with whom he now conversed. There had been a time, he found, when convicts 
who possessed superior recommendations in almost any way, had been treated with distinguished favour and attention, but this had gone by, and he learnt that his whole, re his whole reliance towards obtaining a different course of treatment to that which would attend those around him was superior excellence of future conduct. But, although disappointed, he was not dismayed. Mr Bruce, who had been sedulous from the moment he first held communication with the local authorities to procure for him every indulgence that was possible, said to him the day before the disembar disembarkation of the, of the prisoners was to take place, I am sorry that I have no very good news for you, as I find it is impossible to do so much for you as I had hoped. I have just been with the Governor on your behalf, and I have told him that your whole behaviour has been most exemplary. But it is the future, not the past, I'm sorry to find, that will do you any good. However, you have one source of consolation, and it is a great one. The Governor is said to be a kind, good man. And as I've no fear of how you'll behave, I dare say you'll find things all work well in time. You must go ashore tomorrow along with the others, and must wear the same sort of dress as they do. But I'm sure your mind is above such trifle as outward garments. <coughs> Pardon me. Quintus had been prepared for all this, but by what had already reached him, and replying that he trusted he should never give Mr Bruce cause to regret this kind interference, retired, busy in preparing for the new scenes in which he was to be an actor. Early the following morning, taking his place in the common herd of which he was enrolled a member, he once more trod his, his mother earth, and being conveyed to a large building, was ushered into a yard, where, being marshalled in regular order, he awaited some hours what was to be the next step in his career of degradation. At the end of that time, the unusual stir and bustle that...